So with marijuana now legal in California, recreationally to all adults, um, a lot of people are uh, actually, they're naturally going to go and, and use marijuana. And this has everybody at Fox News uh, freaked the fuck out. Um, they are not taking this well. Yesterday, they aired an extremely goofy segment about California being a sanctuary state. Uh, not just sanctuary city, but sanctuary state. The whole state's a sanctuary state. Uh, so they're like, oh my God, the people that come here illegally are going to get high. And then they're going to be both illegal and stoned out of their mind. Horrible. What are you doing, California? Oh my God. It's... It's it's the it's a dystopian hellscape in California. Actually, no, that's not the reality of it. But again, um, that's Fox News for you. Today is uh, pretty much the same. Um, they have decided to bring out their Fox News medical A team. Oh no! <laughs> Get a load of this goofiness. Watch. Colorado, talk about them since 2013, recreational marijuana has been legal. Brian, yes, they've raised about a half a billion dollars doing that with taxes and fees, but here's the problem. Fatal car accidents involving pot has doubled over that period of time. So that doesn't mean that pot's the cause, but they're finding that people that die in car wrecks, twice as many as before, have some marijuana in their system. Oh my God, people are dying because they have marijuana in their system. It's not, because, it's not, but it's not causing the car accidents. It just so happens that people who get into car accidents are now twice as more likely or twice as likely now to have some marijuana in their system. Oh my God. But okay. But if it's not the cause, then why bring it up? That's correlation without causation. That's a logical fallacy. You're supposed to be the Fox News medical A team. We're already off to a great start, but it actually uh, gets better. And in a way, it's worse than alcohol, Ainsley. It's in your system for days and days, THC, so it impairs judgment. That's what you need with driving. You know, it, it impairs how you're thinking, where, where you perceive the car, next car being. It's got to increase car you, you Oh, my God. It stays in your system for days and days and days. You know, no, there are people out there that would kill for a strain that actually lasts days and days. Yes, there's THC that stays in your system. Uh, there's a difference between metabolized and non-metabolized THC. Metabolized doesn't actually make you high because you've already metabolized it, right? Um, no, you don't stay high for days. You don't smoke a joint on Friday and still be high on Sunday. That's not how this thing works, okay? <laughs> and, and he says, oh, but, but it, it impairs your, it's got to impair it. It's got to, it's got to increase car accidents. It's got to, even though. It, it actually doesn't. Again, more you know logical fallacies. But I love how he says, it, in some cases, it's even worse than alcohol. Do you know that? It's worse than alcohol. Worse than alcohol. Really. Um, now, look, you can go through it and, and you can show people um, direct stats of how uh, of drunk drivers uh, getting killed and, and getting into accidents and getting killed um, as a result of drinking. But they can't actually do that when it comes to marijuana. All they have to say is, well, well, we found marijuana in their system in a car crash, but we cannot prove it's because they were high during that because it stays in your system for uh, days, sometimes, uh, you know, almost a month, right? He's conflating these two different things. Again, staying in your system doesn't mean that you're high from it. I, I can't believe I have to explain this uh, to a Fox News doctor, <laughs> but again, A-team, right? Now, here's where it actually gets even more stupid. Take a listen. What about brain health? When I was in high school, I remember people saying, if you do this, it's going to kill your brain cells. Is that a myth? No, it actually does kill your brain cells, number one. It affects your heart and lungs, too. But in terms of that, that's the biggest problem. You do not perform as well on tests. You do not do as well in the workplace. It affects relationships. So right. long-term use, and we're talking about you know once a week. We're not talking about somebody that uses it once or twice. Regular use of pot definitely impacts relationships You've probably seen that. You've seen that I in your see patients. It all the, I see it all the time. And I see it in the office all the time. I think we all have. We all have someone in mind that, gosh, there were a lot of people in my high school I thought and, were so smart, and they would do that and then go down the wrong path. And, of course, they use it with other things like alcohol. There's a huge increase of alcohol use among people that are also using pot. 
You ever thought that maybe the alcohol use is actually worse with the marijuana? Just saying. Just saying. This is crazy. This is incredible propaganda. Ainsley thinks that, oh, no, you know, I saw these people. I mean, they were super smart. And then, then they got a hold of the pots, and then they went in completely different directions. You think that maybe, I don't know, they might have went the wrong direction because they got arrested for smoking a plant? Maybe. I don't know, but they don't think about this. Um, no, it destroys your relationships, and it makes you eat the neighbor's baby. You don't want to eat your neighbor's baby. Don't smoke pot. This is Again, this is 1950-style hysteria. Hey, Fox News, 1950s, uh, they want their propaganda back. <laughs> Look, there are plenty of people who are high-functioning, who hold jobs and careers, and actually regularly smoke marijuana. Some do it for pain. Some do it just because they want to. And in California, we finally decided that, hey, that's actually fine. They're not high for days at a time. Again, this is rank propaganda from the Fox Med uh, News Medical A team. If this is the A team, I'd hate to see what the B team is like. Now look, marijuana, we, we do need more studies on the effects of, of, of marijuana. We do, absolutely. I, I don't think that it's a 100% cure-all because there is no such thing. There is no silver bullet, but med uh, medical marijuana has some very beneficial effects. So it can have effect on, for example, anxiety, PTSD, things like that, uh, arthritis, and there are other physical conditions when, when it comes to pain. It's actually even also helping uh, get people away from um, opioids, opiate addiction. They've actually tried that as well. And later on in that uh, same segment, this Fox News doctor is like, no, this is a gateway to opioid addiction. No, it's not. It's actually a way for people to get off of opioid addiction. So again, this guy is uh, just full of complete misinformation, but we do need to do more studies on the long-term effects of marijuana. And the reason that we have not been able to is because the federal government says you, can't, you actually can't. No, you're not allowed to do these studies because they know, I think that they know, and I, I can go back to the Schaefer report on this one, the one that uh, Schaefer did for Nixon. Nixon's like, oh, pff, don't care about it. I want to use this against my political enemies, liberal, hippie liberals, and African Americans. So that's what, what that's that's what why we're going to launch this war on drugs against people because it goes after my political enemies. So they're not at all interested in facts. Um, and it, it, again, that's what this drug war is there to prevent. It's to prevent us from actually doing the research and finding out the benefits. And that marijuana, and, and also to show that marijuana, I mean, if we can't do the research on marijuana to show that it's not as addictive and it's not addictive, it's not as harmful as they're saying, well, then that defeats the entire purpose of the drug war and it basically makes it untenable. Um, I know I could find a better word from that, uh, but it makes it so that they are no longer able to justify doing a war on drugs. And that, of course, means police uh, departments, they miss out on federal funding. Um, Anti-drug programs also miss out on federal funding. Private prisons and normal prison systems also miss out on federal funding. So there is an entire industry at stake that will try to keep this drug war alive. Now, what's great about the California decision is that now there's a chance for uh, I get legal corporations, I guess, that are built up around. And I, and I, it's sort of weird saying like, oh, I'm actually looking forward to the business of marijuana because it is a win for freedom, but it's also going to be a, w a giant win for corporations too. They're going to get lobbyists and they're going to grease politicians and then it's going to become legal all over the country. But I do think in the end that actually, that actually is a big win uh, because it's a win against I guess, other more insidious interests. So it's very interesting to see on this uh, how this has turned out. But with this, I mean, 
the dominoes have started to fall. I mean, look, Colorado, Washington, California, bunch of other states making it legal for medicinal use. Here they go. The dominoes have fallen. Hey, everybody. Thanks for watching this video. If you want to see more like this, please hit the subscribe button below. And if you want to support truly independent progressive media, please consider becoming a patron at patreon.com slash TYT Nation.